what it looks like when you're looking at the birds and the flight. Happy Friday, everyone. We'll just give folks a couple more seconds to take their seats. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the White Cope Ceremony at the Virginia Tech Carillon School of Medicine for the class of 2025. I would like to uh, thank all of the family members and friends who are joining us, whether in person or via live stream. Your student, as well as the faculty administration, wish that everyone could be here to celebrate this important occasion in person. No matter whether you're here in person or in spirit, together we share a great sense of pride about our exceptional students in the class of 2025. At the outset, I'd like to recognize some of our leadership groups within the organization. These folks will play a very important role in the growth of our students over the next four years. Scattered throughout the auditorium and on this stage are chairs, deans, and selected members of the faculty and staff. Those present, will you please stand? Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. And we also appreciate the department chairs, faculty, staff, and members of our dean's team who are with us on the stream. We're so glad you can join us. Next, Aubrey Knight, Senior Dean for Student Affairs, will come to the podium to explain the history of the White Coat Ceremony and share a little bit about the Class of 2025. Aubrey? Thank you, Dean Learman. The first White Coat Ceremony was held at the College of Physicians and Surgeons at Columbia University in New York in 1993. Inspired by the vision of Dr. Arnold P. Gold, a professor of pediatric neurology at Columbia, who was concerned that students were losing their connection to the human element of care. The purpose of the ceremony is to clarify for students that a physician's responsibility is to both take care of patients and to care for patients. Providing a ritual to mark the passage of the student into our medical society is as old as the Hippocratic Oath itself. Dr. Gold felt it important that medical students should be provided with well-defined expectations and responsibilities appropriate for the medical profession early in their education prior to contact with patients. That is what inspired the Arnold P. Gold Foundation to advocate and for and sponsor the White Coat Ceremony, now held annually at most medical schools in the United States, as well as many in foreign countries. In this ceremony, the white coat becomes not only a rite of passage, but also a symbol of the profession itself. 
So as you have your freshly ironed, pristine white coats placed on your backs, may this not only serve to remind you of this next step in, in uh, 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 this next step in your journey to becoming an MD, but also as a reminder of our responsibility to the health of our patients. The class of 2025 white coats have been donated to your class by Dr. and Mrs. Richard Wardrop through um, a grant that they have provided. Sarah and Dick are graduates of Virginia Tech. Dr. Wardrop was on the faculty of VTCSOM as the school was being envisioned and started. He recognized the symbolic importance of this event and wanted me to welcome you into this honorable and most human of professions. The 27 women and 22 men who make up the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine class of 2025 and who, receive, who will receive their white coats today represent 49 incredibly bright, accomplished, and motivated students out of a pool of, hang on to your seats, over 6,400 applicants and 285 interviewees. This class represents 14 home states and include 12 who call Virginia home, as well as 13 from California. They attended 36 different in undergraduate institutions and, have, and 15 have earned graduate degrees or post -bacs. What brings them together is their common desire to become the best physicians they can possibly become. It is that desire that has attracted them to the unique and challenging curriculum offered at Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine. They are here tonight to publicly state through the taking of an oath and the symbolism of the white coat that they are committed to the next important step in their quest toward becoming worthy of the title of medical doctor. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker. Each year we seek to identify a white coat speaker who has distinguished themselves as an, as an, as an exemplar of humanistic practice. This year is no different. This is the first year that we've had an invited guest from outside our faculty to serve as the keynote speaker, and I can think of no one better than Dr. Charles Pohl to be the first such individual. Dr. Pohl is the Center City Campus Chancellor for Thomas Jefferson University and the Vice Dean for Student Affairs and Career Counseling and Professor of Pediatrics at the Sidney Kimmel Medical College. Dr. Pohl is a graduate of the Jefferson Medical College and completed a pediatrics residency at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. He's been a practicing pediatrician, pedi pediatric faculty member in Pennsylvania and Delaware. He brings a perspective to medical education from his interest and experience in the healthcare learning environment, collaborative compassionate care, and general pediatrics, which has resulted in numerous national presentations, peer-reviewed publications, and a book on medical professionalism. He is the current chair of the AAMC Group on Student Affairs, chair of the Group on Student Affairs Medical Student Performance Evaluation Working Group, and a previous chair of the Arnold of the uh, Gold Humanism Honor Society Advisory Council. I had the privilege of serving on that advisory council while Dr. Pohl was the chair, and it was during those meetings that I came to know and appreciate the passion he has for humanism and compassion in medical education and clinical care. His impact on medical education and clinical pediatrics has been lauded by his induction into the GHHS, the Alpha Omega Alpha Medical Honor Society, and the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. He is the recipient of numerous honor, honors and awards, recognized for his teaching, humanism, and humanitarianism. On a personal note, he is a friend, a trusted colleague, and a mentor. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Charles Pohl. There's, there's no uh, words here. Uh, uh, well, um, good evening. And um, I first want to thank uh, Dr. Hopper Knight uh, for those kind words in the introduction. Thank you. And I do want to thank Dean Learson or Learman um, for this invitation. It's, it's quite an honor. And um, to be part of this momentous occasion, um, I'm, I'm truly humbled. Um, as I flew in last night, I immediately understood why Roanoke is considered the magic city. The expansive woodland, the rolling blue-tinged mounds, and the tease of that colorful foliage. And tonight, it's easy to understand 
why the white coat ceremony is a magical moment for all of you. Today, you are about to take a vow, a lifelong commitment to the practice of medicine. You will see many miracles in the coming years, as well as make miracles possible as you move forward. And you are entering medicine at a time when the world is looking to all of us for safety and comfort. The world needs you. The world needs you. And as I look into the audience today, I am very confident that the world will be in good hands. So welcome, welcome to Madison. You're all academically talented, empathic and altruistic, and are filled with dreams to improve the health care of others, especially those who are vulnerable and without a voice. And you're going to be taught by extraordinary educators along the way, your faculty, but especially your patients who will embed the spirit of ut prosim, that I may serve in your education. Therefore, I'm again humbled and honored to be here tonight to share just a brief moment in your remarkable journey to becoming a doctor, and again, welcome you. Relationships, human touch, and trust. And I'll come back to those words in a few minutes. A few years ago, I had an unforgettable patient encounter. An 87-year-old woman with multiple comorbidities was emergently admitted to a local tertiary care hospital because she became obtunded, lost consciousness. The family and the compassionate medical team began to discuss hospice care for this medically fragile woman. During a brief yet lucent moment, the elderly woman opened her eyes and asked to her family, is the time on the clock correct? Is the time on the clock correct? And I'll return to this story in a little bit. You always hear me. I think there's not a more exciting time to be entering the field of medicine. Even in my 30 plus years of practice, we've seen a reduction in mortality and morbidity through advances in medications, vaccines, and systematic approach to patient care. I'm a pediatrician, so children, for example, in my lifetime in practice, no longer need to die from childhood leukemia or succumb to Mophilus influenza type B meningitis or epiglottitis or now can live past 15 years of age with cystic fibrosis. Our neurosurgical team at Jefferson today operated in over 30 hospitals across five states while sitting in a room in Center City, Philadelphia, without even touching a patient. Innovation has also allowed patients to engage and manage their own diseases like hypertension and diabetes through handheld heart, uh, smart devices without even involving a physician. While these changes are exciting, they do bring new challenges to our patients, their families, us as clinicians, and our communities. Relationships, human touch, and trust. Relationships are at the core of medicine. And you have all hit the ground running over the last 11 weeks, exploring in depth the relationships between organs, blood vessels, nerves, and muscles. You, have, you will learn about the intricate functioning of different organ systems and related therapeutic interventions. This in turn will ensure patient safety and improve patient outcome. That is, you will know how to avoid nicking a fetus's scalp during a C-section or puncturing a lung during the procedure, or prescribing the wrong antibiotic for an underlying infection. You will also begin to learn information and clues to identify and solve problems in clinical care. Your relationships with each other and ability to function in collaborative team will also be essential. I was reminded of this important, wonderful support system when one of my students a few years ago was performing his first cardiac exam during the physical diagnosis course. He approached the obese 80-year-old patient 
much the same way a 16-year-old approaches driving, excited yet somewhat frightened, eager yet hesitant, capable yet inexperienced, able yet clumsy. In order to reduce embarrassment and maintain dignity, mostly for himself, he chose to examine the patient through her clothes. Unfortunately, he was not able to hear the patient's heart sound. Due to the fabric of the blouse and the sweater, two barriers that were absent when he was practicing the physical diagnosis skills on his male classmate. With perspiration mounting on his brow, he had the patient sit up so he could conduct the lung exam. With each ticking second, his heartbeat and his respiratory rate quickened and the perspiration mounted. And after about 10 minutes with no heart sound and no lung sound auscultated, he was convinced the patient was dead. So he quickly excused himself, ran out of the room into an upper level class person. And after he got up off the ground, the more experienced student spoke to the younger and, and more novice learner, that he had used the wrong side of the chest, of the stethoscope chest piece. And again, an invaluable lesson that you will learn from your colleagues. So therefore, please remember that you, uh, your, the, your classmates, family, friends are critical in supporting you in your studies and ensuring that you maintain balance. Relationships with your faculty, your faculty will serve as mentors in the coming year and will challenge you in your studies while sparking curiosity and modeling professionalism. And like Dr. Learman, I would ask that the faculty as well as the family all stand and be acknowledged for really supporting you to get to you uh, to this point. So if all the faculty, the staff, and, um, and the family, if you could please rise so that the students can acknowledge and thank you for all that you have done. Collaborative teams are going to, they make us all successful. Relationships. The patient-physician relationship is the core doctrine and starts with compassion, empathy, and good communication skills. A few years ago, I learned the importance of communication through an interaction I had with the patient's family me member when I was notified by the answering service of the children's hospital that I worked for because the mother was apparently worried that the child's umbil umbilical cord was infected. So for 15 years, I spoke to, or 15 years, for 15 minutes, I spoke to this first time mother. And I explained to put alcohol on the shriveling stump, which is something we used to do back in the day. And then I explained that the umbilical cord really ever gets infected. And most importantly, the cord will separate from the body in two weeks. And then after a 15 second pause, the mother quietly spoke, spoke to me and said, Dr. Pohl, I was worried that the circumcision site was infected, not the umbilical cord. Because I hadn't taken the time to do my own history and listen to the family, I had to spend another 15 minutes explaining, don't put the alcohol on the circumcision site. <laughs> Again, it rarely gets infected. And most importantly, the penis will not fall off in two weeks. <laughs> so again, listening and communication are really gonna be key as you move forward in your career. Relationships, human touch, and trust. Yes, patient-physician relationship is core of doctoring and will bring a lifetime of rewards. So please remember to bring empathy and compassion when caring for your patients and their families. That is, we must care for patients rather than manage them, and we must heal them rather than treat them. And with every patient encounter, you have an opportunity to touch them and make them feel better. That is, preserve the human touch with every patient encounter. As Dr. William Osler once said, 
The practice of medicine is an art, not a trade, a calling, not a business. It's a calling in which your heart will be exercised equally with your head. Relationships, human touch, and trust. When I was a pediatric intern about 35 years ago, I was asked to tell patients of an 11-month-old child with meningitis the medical team's findings, the treatment options, and the possible long-term sequela. As if it was yesterday, I remember the frightened mother looking down at her child, over at her husband, and then, then at me. And she said, quietly, she said, please do whatever you think is best. I have complete trust in you. Please do whatever you think is best. I have complete trust in you. And all I could think of, is she crazy? I'd only been a pediatric intern for a month. I, I, I had trouble calling myself doctor, let alone being responsible for her child's life. But over the years, I've come to really appreciate this trust the public places on our profession and the impact that your education at Virginia Tech Carillion School of Medicine will have on all of you as future physicians. So now I'm going to return to the story about the hospitalized 87 year old patient being placed in hospice care. After the family confirmed that the time on the clock was correct, she responded, I never appreciated how valuable time was. I never appreciated how valuable time was. That patient was my mother. She died peacefully a couple days later, surrounded by my family, an incredibly compassionate team of caregivers. I almost never discuss personal stories publicly, but I share this private moment today to share a couple points. Please remember the importance and impact of our relationships have on patients. Despite all the innovations, the advances in technology and medicine, my family is most grateful for the empathy and humanistic touch that was provided by the entire medical team and their willingness to actively listen and patiently answer our questions during our most difficult time. To paraphrase Dr. Oser, people don't care how much they know until they know how much you care. So please observe and emulate your faculty role models, many who are here today, such as Dr. Aubrey Knight, who exemplify the humanistic approach. These are real role models you're going to see. And um, you know, I, do, I know Dr. Knight uh, for some years, and he really exemplifies um, what we hope all clinicians um, have. So please cling on to these role models. The other thing is, please remember that time is precious. And you must wake up every day and find meaning and purpose in what you're doing, as well as do things that bring you joy. So in closing, please remember that you're embarking on a profession that relies on relationships, embraces the human touch, and is grounded on trust of our society. Each of you sitting before us today will be our future leaders of healthcare. Yes, you're all ac academically talented, but as importantly, each of you encompass something special that will enable you to excel and stand out as a clinician. There isn't a better time to be entering the field of healthcare, and I want you to enjoy and revere the practice of medicine. As in the day when my father and grandfather practiced, you will get to wake up and teach, learn, and care for patients every day. And that is a true gift and privilege. And as you don your white coats, you will stuff in your pockets invaluable paraphernalia today, tomorrow, in the coming weeks, months, and years. There are going to be stethoscopes you'll put in, a pen you'll put in, small pocket guides, pen lights, eye charts, tuning forks, snacks, your smartphones. All I ask is as you do this, that you please remember to save some room 
for the human touch and for empathy. And again, thank you for allowing me to spend part of this momentous day with all of you and your family. And again, congratulations and welcome to the field of medicine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. That was inspiring and moving. Uh, the, the gift of trust that we get from our patients and how we return that gift with our listening, our heart, our compassion, our healing. Uh, very moving. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. There's much to celebrate today, and we hope that each of our students will take in the moment and feel the joy of this occasion to be as present as you can be. We also hope that your sense of celebration and meaning will transcend today and accompany you, like the coat, throughout your careers in medicine. Wearing a white coat means many things to our patients and the healthcare community. In keeping with that spirit, our students have had several opportunities to hear from senior physicians and early career physicians about the meaning of the white coat. And we've asked them to write essays or poems expressing some, in some way uh, what receiving a white coat means to them. Past classes reflected on the white coat as a symbol of respect, trust, and humanism, and shared personal stories of their journey into medicine. Students from the class of 2025, you expressed these themes and also reflected on the responsibilities, opportunities, and beginnings of your identities as represented by the white coat. Some emphasized how the identity started. Some connected the white coat to personal and family histories that preceded this new journey. Here are some excerpts uh, from your essays highlighting the richness of these reflections. These are your words. When I wear my white coat for the first time, it symbolizes a blank canvas, blank for all my future patients to paint their stories into. With each patient encounter, I will hear a new story, stories of pain, comfort, sadness, and happiness. And so with each patient I meet, my white coat gets painted more complex and more complete. In the future, as I put my white coat on, I become reminded of these stories and why I am a doctor. Another student's essay included these passages. My white coat represents my strength and determination. My white coat represents my family and ancestors. My white coat represents all the women who fought against patriarchy. My white coat represents the responsibility and duty to preserve and protect. My white coat represents the privilege and the responsibility that I have as a scientist. As I stand here in front of God and the people dearest to me, I accept this white coat with humility and promise to represent my ancestors who paved the path for me so I can stand here and commit myself to serve, protect, and increase medical knowledge. I now take the responsibility for my ancestors to pave the path for those who come after me. This is my white coat. Another essay was titled, At Once Nothing and Everything. A dream held so long ago, a dream held so long that the time between its inception and deliverance almost becomes irrelevant, both physical and metaphorical, a representation of servitude sacrifice and gratitude what an honor a coveted burden to lay light on my shoulders but heavy on my heart it is every tear internal battle and risk taken to get here every tear internal battle and risks i'll take to get there it is everything historically isolated but now widespread a symbol of the power of a team of humility of putting patience first Above a, piece, above a piece of fabric, and so it is nothing. The final passage I will share is from an essay called The Oath of Office. When I don my white coat, I shall be taking my personal oath each and every day. That oath is to serve my community, my patients, and represent those who came before me. My white coat is for my family, who has pushed me to achieve my highest dreams. It is for my community, who I learned from and served for years. It is for my patients, some of whom have lost their lives, to honor the lessons they have taught me. Its color, pure white, a new beginning, and a reminder to cleanse the maladies our patients face. Its length, to cover our imperfections. 
reminding us to prioritize our patients and set aside our personal ailments, its pockets, to contain our resources as we must never walk alone in this endeavor, our institution, a sigil of pride and all motif for the values held within. Most importantly, our name, our family, our ancestors, and those who have worked their lives to put it on us. As I don my white coat, I am not doing it alone. I have the help of my family, my friends, my community, and those who stand behind me. As the white coat sits upon our shoulders, it shall feel lighter. As we know the weight of the responsibility it bears is eased by those who love us and those who aided us along our journey. These are your words, class of 2025, and they signify the remarkable thoughtfulness with which this class has begun their journey into physicianhood. We hope the class will have an opportunity to look back from time to time on the reflections and update their growing understanding of becoming a physician, what it means to them personally. In addition to their individual reflections, it has become a tradition for each class to develop a shared set of guiding principles. These principles act as a compass for their class to follow during the time as a medical student through their years of residency training and into their career journeys as physician leaders. I would like to introduce you to the class of 2025 president, Alexander Inn, who will read the class's guiding principles. Alexander, please come forward. Right. Thank you, Dean Learman, for the introduction. Um, and thank you to all the faculty, friends, and families, both in person and online, for uh, celebrating this special moment with all of us. And also, congrats to my classmates for passing block one and making it this far. Uh, it, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, now, an honor to be sharing with you all the guiding principles for the class of 2025. We are diverse. We come together as one at Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine from our individual paths of life, bringing our own experiences, values, and cultures to form a diverse community. We celebrate our unique perspectives as we encourage and challenge one another through our academic and personal growth in medical school. We strive to not only recognize our differences and those in the communities we serve, but also understand that we are all human humans with imperfections, struggles, and emotions. Therefore, we champion diversity, equity, and inclusion, and aim to treat all patients in their entirety. We are leaders. As future physicians, we hold ourselves to the highest moral and ethical standards, aware of the immense responsibilities we are undertaking as leaders in our communities. We will create environments that encourage camaraderie and collaboration, recognizing the importance of teamwork and advancing medicine while keeping each other accountable. We vow to a life of learning from both our patients and peers as we lead with integrity to improve the way we care for others, treat others, and build trusting relationships. We are passionate for those we serve and accept the responsibility of being a source of guidance to future medical students and patients. We are humble. As we take our Hippocratic Oath, we promise to wear our white coats with humility we admit we are not perfect and have so much to learn from the world around us. Therefore, we dedicate our lives to achieving excellence in our classrooms, clerkships, and practices. We always put our patients first, listening to their stories, responding to their concerns, and simply being present in their time of need. We accept that we will make mistakes and won't have the answers all the time, but we will always take the opportunity to learn from them as we grow in competence and compassion. And finally, we are family. Together as a family, we will celebrate each other's successes while supporting each other in times of hardship. We will be kind to one another with unconditional love. We will remind each other of how hard we have worked to get this far and of the shared vision we hold for improving the health and well being of others. We are the class of 2025. Thank you. In our profession, it is a custom established more than 2,000 years ago that no one may be admitted to its honors who has not first expressly undertaken its obligations. In a moment, we will take an oath that in its original form was written by Hippocrates. 
Ours is a modern version of that oath, written so long ago, but still applicable today. As the students prepare to recite the oath together, let us take a moment of silence to each humbly acknowledge all those who have come before us and have dedicated their lives to this noble profession and to the people it serves, to all those who have taught, supported, and encouraged us in order that we could reach the present moment, and to all those, in particular our teachers and our patients, who will help us become physicians of excellence and, and, care, and caring. And now, in that same spirit, let us together, all physicians in the audience, whether faculty or family members, along with the students in the class of 2025, stand and recite the oath. I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability and judgment, and with the support and encouragement of others, this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those in whose steps I walk and gladly share knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of my patients all measures appropriate, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and undertreatment. I will practice the art of medicine as well as science, remembering that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may overweigh the or drug. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed. I will remember that I do not care for a patient alone. Rather, I am part of an interprofessional team, all of whom offer their skills to assist the patient in care and caring. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death, recognizing this awesome responsibility must be faced with great humility and awareness of my own frailty. I will remember that I do not treat dead or disease, but a sick human being whose illness may affect family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related issues if I am to adequately care for the patient. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to care. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest tradition of my calling, and may I long express the joy of serving those who seek my help. You may be seated. As the students prepare to receive their white coats, I'd like to take a moment to explain the coding process to all those in attendance. When their name is called, each student will come up, to the, uh, come up the stairs to your right to be coded with your white coat, symbolizing the embodiment of these values as they set, as they set forth on the stage on the next, to, for the next stage of their professional development. On the lapel of their coat is a pin from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, which contains the words, keeping healthcare human reminding all under their care that the wearer is committed to providing medical care that is as compassionate as it is high quality. In the pocket of each coat is a note of encouragement from one of the past graduates of VTC SOM. In your mailbox at VTC is a small gift from the school. After they're coded and photographed, they will proceed to the table in front of me to sign the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine oath book on the next available line, acknowledging their commitment to the words and the spirit of the oath they have just taken. There will be a pen in your right coat pocket to, to be used to sign the book. So let us begin the coding ceremony.
Lucas Arney. Courtney Barth. Randall Bissett. Julia DeLuca. Sachi Delakia. Mia Edelson. A region usser. Monica Gerber.
Hasib go here. Jacob Grondon. Bria Hall. Brian Hansen. Alice Holmquist. Alana Hull. Alexander N. Farwa Iqbal. Adam Jacobowitz.
Naveen Jaiswal. Michael Klingener. Merle Conathopoli. Sarah Kramer. James Kwok. Liliana Ladner. Chloe Lassard. Paula Lewis. Yifan Lee. <laughs> no need to run.
Han Wu Lim. Connor Madlow. Christine Marlowe. Aaron McDade. Evgenia Molotkova. Ryan Morse. Sankar Mutakumar. Ethan Nethery.
Devin Pleasance. Gemma Porus Nielsen. Grace Rovenolt. Evan Sandifer. Ani Sarkisian. Tyler Schick. Christina Stolarchuk. Christina couldn't be with us tonight. 
Alexandra Tolosco. Raymond Uimatillo. Paul Varghese. Matthew Vinson. Nancy Wu. Eileen Zhu. Hong Yi.
Musafa Zenab. All right. Well, on behalf of all of the physicians here today, it is with great pride and abundant expectations that I formally welcome the Virginia Tech Hurlian School of Medicine's Class of 2025 to our profession. Will the class please stand and be recognized? Please be seated. Well, thanks again to all of our guests for joining us tonight, witnessing the oath that our class has taken and promising to support them in the challenging and fulfilling odyssey that lies ahead. Good night, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you.